Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In our 21st century Western world, it can be a little hard for us to imagine a situation where there is absolutely no light. But a U.S. pastor traveling recently to visit a partner church in Haiti was struck by the engulfing nature of darkness. You see, one night as he was settling into his dormitory bed in the church compound, the power suddenly went out. Now, it was a cloud covered and a moonless night, so the second that the generator stopped working, it went completely black. It was the first time this pastor could ever remember being in such complete darkness. He couldn't see his hand no matter how close he held it, and in the darkness he discovered that he was frozen. He didn't know what he should do, whether he should get help and try to move around or whether he should just stay still. You see, he didn't know who or even what might be in that room with him. In the darkness, he learned two important things about himself. He learned that he was helpless. He learned that he was afraid. And then in the darkness, he began to hear the sound and then saw the sight of a fellow traveler lighting a match and then lighting a kerosene lantern. But it was that initial light from that tiny little match that seemed to actually and actively push back the darkness to reframe the space that he was in, where he was in proximity to others, and what was happening all around. How many of us know what it is truly like to walk around in darkness, to be frozen and afraid? As a follower of Jesus from a very young age, I have felt those feelings, and often quite deeply, but I have never felt them to the point of hopelessness or despair. You see, I have had the true light of the Word of God to turn to in those moments, and when I have been wise enough to do so, I have found comfort for my pain, healing for my grief, and a light for my path. Light coming into darkness is a powerful image of God's intervention into the most desperate parts of human history. The prophet Isaiah, pointing hundreds of years into the future, had this to say of the coming of Christ. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. Dwelling in deep darkness is at a whole different level from having the power go out and fumbling for your matches for a few minutes. Back in 2004, Lutheran Bible translator missionaries Nathan and Sarah Esla found themselves in their early years of service in a northern Ghanaian community called the Komba people. When they went there to serve, they knew that life was going to be challenging, but they didn't know just how difficult it could get. You see, learning a new culture was honestly kind of weird. Trying to figure out a new language was exhausting. Sometimes it was hard just to find food. And in the middle of all these problems, they kept getting sick. One day, as both of them were lying on their floor, just burning with the fever of malaria, as they pressed their backs against the tile just to get an ounce of relief, one of them crawled across their room to their bookshelf. And they pulled down their Bible and they flipped it open to the book of Psalms, which is that wonderful book of prayers that God gives us when we don't even have the words for what we're feeling. And they found these words from King David. How long, O Lord? How long? And why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? But they also found these words of affirmation. Still, I will trust in you. And you hear the desire of the, the afflicted. And as they read these words of anxiety, but also of comfort and peace, it dawned on them that all around them were people living with the same problems, the same sicknesses, but without the same opportunity. The Komba people, because they did not have a Bible in their language, when they fell to the floor with fever, had nowhere to crawl. Ten years later, through the work of God and the contribution of so many others, the Komba people finally launched their first New Testament translation. 
They had a raucous celebration in 2014, and everybody came out to celebrate it. You see, there's only one book in the Comba language, the Bible. But everybody knows that it is their book, and they wanted to joyfully rejoice in its message. 500 years ago, our forefather, Martin Luther, experienced something similar with his own German people. While working in hiding in the tower, he translated the New Testament into German for the first time so that his people could hear God speak to them in their language without any barrier. While translating, Luther wrote to his friend Thomas Lang saying, I wish that this book alone in all languages would live in the hearts and the hands and the eyes and the ears of all people. And yet 500 years after Luther's New Testament translation, millions of people still don't have a Bible in a language they can read. Without access to God's word, people remain in those dark places. They experience hopelessness and confusion and fear, but there is no light. Now retired Lutheran Bible translator missionary Joan Weber met a young man named Inyibi years ago. Inyibi came to Joan because he had this festering ulcer on his leg, and he wore this loose robe around his body to cover it up, but the robe had such an odor about it that Joan wasn't even sure if she should let this young man into her building. But it wasn't just the odor that gave Joan pause. You see, Inyibi also had a reputation in the small African village that they shared. You see, Inyibi was known as a troublemaker. He had left his family in rebellion years ago. He was living off the things he could steal from his neighbors. And so Inyibi was rejected by his people. Inyibi was walking around in, he, in darkness and he didn't even know it. You see, it wasn't the darkness that brought him to Joan. It was the maggots crawling around in his leg. But Joan agreed to help. And she asked Inyibi if while she helped, she could play the Bible on an audio recorder in Inyibi's language. You see, Inyibi couldn't read. If you had given him a Bible in any language, it wouldn't have done him very much good. But Inyibi could listen. And so each day as he came to Joan and she would clean the wound and change the bandages, that sore on his leg got a little bit smaller, but the word of God got a little bit bigger. Pretty soon, Inyibi told Joan, I want my own New Testament player. I want to take it home every single day. Eventually, Inyibi reconciled with his family and his relatives. Inyibi got baptized, and he began living in peace with others for the first time. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Time passed, Joan had traveled away. She hadn't seen Inyibi in over a year, but when her and her husband Martin came back for a visit, you better believe Inyibi came to say hello. He had his New Testament audio player, he was so proud. And he also had his twin brother. You see, years ago, Inyibi's brother had also fallen into darkness. For him, it was drugs, but also spiritual oppression. Listening to God's word had changed Inyibi completely. And he wanted it to change his brother, too. You see, Inyibi had gone full circle from being the kind of man that just takes from other people to being the kind of man that shares Jesus with his brother. And the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. I've spent a lot of time in this sermon talking about people you've never met in places you've probably never been to. But I want to bring it back here for a moment to Ascension Lutheran Church here in Pittsburgh. I want you guys to think about a time in your life when the light of the Word of God has pushed back the darkness in your own valley of despair. Maybe it pierced through the grief you walked through after losing a parent or a spouse or a child. Maybe it was when that person you thought you were going to love forever just walked away. Maybe it was when that person you thought you could trust with everything, you told them all your secrets, turned out to be a liar. Maybe it was when you didn't know how you were going to make ends meet. The industry had shifted, the job had changed, whatever the case. You were out there all by 
yourself? What would you have done? What would you have done if you did not have God's word and your Christian brothers and sisters to turn to in those moments? How would you have made it through? If you've been in a dark place like that in your life, then you believe from a deep place that everybody deserves the same opportunities that you had. Maybe you're in that dark place right now. Maybe things are really, really hopeless and you have no idea how they're all gonna turn out. And I'll be honest, I don't know the paths God has put you on. I don't know the dark valleys he might lead you into, but I do know this, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Maybe you're fine, but there is somebody in your life and you see them walking around in their own confusion and hopelessness, but they're not in a place where they're gonna listen to you about much of anything. What would you give to have someone come into their lives to point them towards light and hope, to point them towards the light and hope found in the Word of God? What would you give to have someone point them to Jesus? The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. As we recognize Bible Translation Sunday, which is this day that LBT made up so that we guys can share the work that we're doing with y'all. May we celebrate that we have such free access to God's word. We have it in writing, in audio, in video. We have it on books, on our phones, on the internet. You name it. If we're going through a dark place and we need God to speak to us, it's as simple as pulling out our phone and opening our Bible app or calling Pastor Thompson. But let's remember those who are still waiting, those who don't even know what they're missing out on because the things of the Spirit are spiritually discerned. Let's keep in our prayers all those young men and women like in Yibi who are working with Lutheran Bible translators to put God's word in those waiting hands. God's word is a gift. It's a gift for us. It's a gift for everybody. The true light, which gives light to everyone, he has come into the world. His name is Jesus. He was born in a manger in Bethlehem. He lived a perfect life, but he died on a cross for your sins, for my sins. But he rose again, and right now he is reigning in power and glory with his Father, and he is coming back. And today, just like every day, he invites you to know him and to trust him even in those dark moments and to share the good news of who he is here in Pittsburgh and all the ways to the ends of the earth. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.